Ooh, what's up, guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi Fi battle with Joe's rule, of course, the Scarender. And well, today we're going up against Cleo or Johnny. And um, yeah, this was an enemy match I had on my stream, of course, and uh, a lot of unique Pokemon in this battle. So, this was definitely a very, very fun one because of that. Uh, look at my opponent's team here. We got Scyther, Archaeops, Rotom, oh, Furfro, <laughs> Rapid Dash, and Torterra. And really, here, knowing Cleo, I mean, I was probably guessing here that the heat or the Archaeops was the special set due to the amount of physical pressure uh, from her team. Um, just a wild guess though, but knowing Cleo, she definitely does that, you know, brings the weird sets and definitely, definitely puts me in a bad range. And um, I myself here using Gigalith, Polyrath, Cradle Leaf, Evil Lug, Flareon, and Stanther. And uh, really here, the only Pokemon that I need to keep at bay here are my Polyrath and my Flareon. Those two can deal with the most Pokemons here, but um, that's about it. Like, my Stanther won't do any help here, my Gigalith will definitely not help this battle whatsoever. So I'm gonna use that as my lead just to get up uh, rocks or anything like that. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Like, that's, that's really all I got here. And... Um, I was basically banking on her starting off with Archaeops or Saita due to me, I have, me having two Pokemon that can set up rocks and I don't see this being on our team. So anyway, with of course all of this in mind guys, let's go. So right, I don't really have the best matchup here to get go because like I said, I'm gonna stop with Gigalith because I know I can kind of void off whatever comes her way. Eee, damn it, Torterra. And um, there is not a whole lot I can do. I was backing her going for either attacking move or set up rocks herself. So she goes for Woodhammer. That's fine. That's fine. I can take it. Not well, but I do take it. And I'm going to retaliate with the Stone Edge. And I know it's resisted. But I was in that point where I can definitely take her down with me here. And because I get the cost of Bear Explosion. And uh, yeah, it worked. It worked this time, honestly. And uh, that is um, Torterra out of the way. And that is super, super, super important. Um, like I said there, I had very few options with Gigalith. And uh, going down like this and taking something with me is... Uh, it's the best play I can do here. And obviously it works. So anyway, she's gonna go to her Archaeops. I myself go into my Polyrath. And I, like I said, uh, this is a special set... Um, Polarat and she knew that going in so she predicted me to go for the vacuum wave here and um, yeah I had to go for vacuum wave because I need to bring it down to the fetus range but uh, here's the fur throw and the fur throw take this really well and um, I was not in the range of uh, going for a focus blast just yet or rather I should say I was thinking I could kind of void her off with cradley Cradley does not have a Toxic or anything like that, and uh, I probably should have considered that, consider she is gonna Toxic me. And yeah, I think I went for Stealth Rocks here, seeing this is my honest opportunity to set up something. Because Stealth Rocks nerves quite a lot on her team, so I knew that that's, this is my best bet of doing so. And like I said, she has no spin on her team, which is great, it kinda help out, I don't set up Rocks. Uh, right, I gotta switch out to Meltdown, alright, my bad. And she's gonna show me the cutting guard, and now I was feeling that, alright, we can't go for super power either. It's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. And obviously her HP is gonna go back up. And this is a bit of a stall mount, really. I have gone switch out, out back, and like that, a few turns ahead here, but I'm gonna switch out to Gradley again and uh, set up the rocks. <laughs> because that's really all I can do here. And um, I was predicting her to maybe go for a toxic again. And if so, you know, I can kind of void that off, or else you're hoping I could do so. So yeah, like I said, a bit of a stall out. I can't do anything against this fur throw, and I think she kind of realized that. She's gonna go for a turn, and of course, me having Rocky Helmet, she will get some residual damage, and that is great, that is awesome, that is really, really good. I, that's all I need here. And um, I can't obviously hit her with, uh, I can't hit her with a physical attack right now. And uh, she's even gonna go so far and set up another cotton guard. And uh, yeah, this this is definitely like at this point of this battle, I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know if I can come through here. So I'm gonna go for Giga Rain just to get some damage off, and that is not a whole lot. And uh, in contrast with the uh, Toxic, there is no way I'm going to kind of get her in this fashion. So I need to play the Polygraph card and banking on a Focus Blast. 
and they're hoping that's enough to take her out. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch out to the Polyrath or the Gwyn. And um, really, here this Pokemon is so goddamn chunky. It's just so tough to deal with. She's gonna score a critical return here. Obviously, it's actually kind of okay. It's still a three hit KO. And uh, yeah, leftovers of course will help me a lot here. And um, now the moment you have all been waiting for. Actually, she's outspeeding us, toxic. My bad. My bad. But uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go for that Focus Blast, and I land it! And now, is it enough? Is it enough? It is enough. I should have just done this from the beginning, after Vacuum Wave, and just go for a Focus Blast. Really here, we went six turns of her Toxic you know, half my team here, and uh, yeah! She definitely put in a range here where I should I should have done something differently here, I really felt that. So she's gonna go to Sawdasher. And the Rapid Dash is super, super strong. I couldn't really risk um, Wild Charge here. Like I said, Polyrath is my key condition, if anything. So I'm gonna go into Sotel just to get Intimidate off. And back on this damage, I was so sure she was banded at this point. And I'm obviously Scarfed. So the Flare Blitz will do so much damage. But the worst part is, she is actually Scarfed herself. And since she's 100 base and I am, I think, 85, she's going to outspeed and. Um, Crap. That is awful. That is really awful. But now I know at least that she is locked into it and uh, that it is not banded. Just Stantler is just that weak. You just <laughs> have to accept that. So I saw it as a golden opportunity to you know get some recovery going. So I decided to switch in my Cradley, tanking um, a Flare Blitz and then go for recover. Because I knew that at least I could get some, like, getting something out of the way to kind of come back. And then switch into my Flareon, um, and that was probably not the best play, honestly, because I had a actually a situation where I just can kept go for recover, and it wouldn't really have mattered. The toxic would have wheeled me down, sure, but uh, going into meltdown like this means that she actually have a golden opportunity to switch into whatever she needs to, which is, of course, actually the far, far inferior choice. So I'm gonna go for bite just to take her out. I need a defense to go in, and that is the Rapidash out of the way. And Rapidash, what a Pokemon! This thing always comes through, you know, tempting teams. So anyway, she's gonna go to Archaeops, and like I said, um, I'm actually not that good of a position, so I have to set Cradle Lee, which means that the recovery I was doing was, you know, it didn't really matter now, did it? Because switching it in like this is. Um, going to kill it. It's definitely going to kill it. That is a 2 hit KO. So I would have been much better off just recover stalled to, um, against the Flare Blitz in Rapidash. But hey, what can you do? Cradle is going to fall like this and that is um, that is okay. That is what happens. So since she's locked into the Earth Power and I knew that, I was just going to go to Gwen and pretty much faking that I was going to go for a Vacuum Wave, but I actually decided to go for a Scald. Thinking about it, she probably have gone for the Ice Beam. Because um, even with the Stealth Rock damage, it is not enough for a skull to break through. And um, the lack of switchings I have against the Scyther, I only got the Evilug to it. And I decided to try to gamble and hope that she went for a fighting move instead. Because I didn't really know if Evilug could take that part of damage. But no, she just going for safe mode early ace. And that is a Polar Retired Away. And that's really bad, because that is my number one response to her Archeops, and now it's gone. So I'm gonna go to Tesseract, and um, like I said, this is the Avalog set, uh, or the <laughs> it's the Assault Vest set, and it does still take physical damage quite well, and the side is gonna go down here, and well, the big question now is, can Avalog take an Asian power from the Heatran? No, Archeops. <laughs> Trend. Anyway, she's gonna go for Asian power, and sadly, guys, he's gonna fall. He has sadly, due to the specs, he's gonna break through, and that is a KO. And my last matchup, of course, is the Flareon, and I won't be able to outspeed. I can't bring it down to its potential uh, defeatist range. So the Asian power does not kill me, but the Flare Blitz residual damage will. And that is a 1-0 victory in my opponent's favor. She only had the um, Rotom Freeze left. And I really, f for me to win him, I needed my Flare in full HP against the Rotom. That was the only way I was gonna win this battle since it does have speed. 
But sadly, that was not happening, and like I said, the play with my Polarad might have uh, mattered more than I want to agree on. But then again, my opponent played a very, very good game, I and I tried to keep it up, and we were basically one good prediction from winning. But that is how it is. Cleo is definitely a good battler, and it's fun going up against her because she is just so cool with her sets. So yeah, we did lose, and um, <laughs> you know what? Looking at this battle again, I was actually just, I was so in awe really about my opponent because she did some major good plays here. And um, the only reason I could have won is if I actually have stalled her out. And uh, first of all, I don't like doing so. And second of all, uh, you know, having a stream means that you have to have the entertainment going. And I was basically trying to predict her and get momentum from that. But sadly, or I guess not really sadly. Um, she's just that good of a battler, so she shot, saw right through me and got the right matchups through and through and at the end won because of that. And that is just, you know, a testament of the brawn that my opponent really brought. And, you know, overall a one on victory or loss in uh, my opponent's favor, it's fine. It's, it was actually kind of cool and um, I was glad I could showcase my sets and I definitely was very glad to see special set he, uh, he I was to say that again, Heatran, Archeops coming through. Ar special set Archeops is really, really tough. It has the like unique move set, and um, it just it just outshines so many things. I really love it. I think it's awesome. Uh, but anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching. As always, of course, and remember to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, of course. And remember, the sky's limit. And have a good day and take care. Right? Bye.